Welcome to Your Thoughts, Your Reality Radio with your host, K. William Spencer. This program is geared to help you see what thoughts and or beliefs are holding you back from being your best for yourself and those around you. Your life is only as good as your thoughts. For more information, visit our website at www.ytyrradio.tk. That's www.ytyrradio.tk. Now, here's your host. Hi, welcome to Your Thoughts, Your Reality Radio. I am your host, K. William Spencer. Uh, we're sorry about the delay and the fact that you're having to watch the show on YouTube, but we had some difficulties going between um, Dr. Sadiq using an iPad, which I know nothing or virtually nothing about, only used it once in my life, and that was shortly after they came out. And uh, then I was trying to do a Skype call while hosting the show, and Skype knocks out the microphone on uh, any meeting, the host of my radio show. So uh, that went out twice, and um, as Dr. Siegel will tell you about it, you have to keep on persevering and learn your lessons along the way, which I think we both did on this case. So let me tell you something a little bit about Dr. Sadiq. Dr. Sadiq is an Indian-born and educated medical doctor who is now and has been for a long time now practicing in the United States. And she is also a book author. And she's here to share some very interesting insights and suggestions for a better life. Dr. Siddiq's main topic is not getting lost in the shallow clutter of the world, but instead focus on the bigger picture and align your thoughts and actions with the bigger purpose of life. Everything happens for a reason. We move through three phases of life. One, the phase of me, 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 or otherwise known as survival. Two, the detachment phase. Three, and the ultimate phase of enlightenment. As you persevere in the detachment phase, not letting circumstances, people, and behaviors affect your bigger picture, you become enlightened and notice a big paradigm shift in your life and look at your life's events as business, excuse me, as blessings in disguise instead of tragedies. A physician by profession and a seeker of the true purpose of life, Shamim Sadiq was born in the beautiful valley of Kashmir, India, called the Switzerland of Asia. She is one of five siblings raised with excellent family values, with her father being a role model in every aspect of her life, from working hard to dedication, learning to detach and let go when things seem impossible, and of course, trust in God no matter what. During her soul-searching struggles, even though she has traveled overseas, she has realized that it is not traveling across continents that gives us understanding. It's our journey within that finds our true purpose in life. So, Dr. Sadiq, we have had our... (laughs) We've had our trial times. Have we actually been enlightened by them today? (laughs) Hi, Hi. Kirk. Thank you so much for having me on this show. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being so patient with me. They say doctors are either bad patients or they're bad computer guys. And I prove to be both. You know, I've been, (laughs) I just know basic stuff in computers. And my daughter has been trying to help me. And remember two days ago, I was trying to Skype you and it wasn't going through. And you kept telling me, click the microphone and all the stuff. I was like, okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then my daughter walks in. She's like, mom, your microphone is off. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. And then I had to I had to switch around, take her iPad. She guided me. And lo and behold, I could carry on a conversation with you. So uh, taking tech technicalities aside i think we all human beings go through perseverance or patience of some kind or the other and it's it's always helpful to be persistent not give up even though it comes across as a hard hard challenge to you where you're like ah oh, i can't do it anymore you just have to keep trying keep pushing it and 
get past that bump and lo and behold the channel opens for you and today i think with your persistence with your hard work and mind pushing it a little bit too we are here talking about realities of life and what a better perspective than what we got today yes actually i'm going to touch on this just a little bit because uh, what i read to introduce you is what you sent me before because for those who are listening dr sadiq is this is not her first time uh, being on a radio show so i would assume that she already has a press release but it's one of the actually the second paragraph you end the paragraph by saying everything happens for a reason and as I tell people all the time, and even in my lifetime, I said, there's sometimes that you know, you find out what the reason is, and I consider that to be a blessing sometimes, just to find out, why did this happen? Why did I have to go through this? Or why did I meet this person? Whatever the case may be. And sometimes it's a blessing to find out. There's other times in life, many times, most times in life, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we don't actually ever find out what it is uh, that, or the reason why something happened or didn't happen. But I guess, well, at least for me, we'll figure it out sooner or later. Maybe it's just that you're supposed to be on YouTube and not on... There you go. <laughs> I, I, might, I might be the new Gangnam star. <laughs> Ooh, <no. laughs> Come up with your own dance style, okay? <laughs> the only problem is we can't get a video hooked up. Otherwise, we'd be the new Gangnam star. That guy made it through what? He, the most popular video on YouTube. So, oh, you yeah. never know. Now, we'll have to see what he does for a follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah, so... Anyway, you have your topic tonight is um oh, let's see. What is it? Uh, something is the title of your book. The I title of my down. book, that's right. Yes. A- aim vertically, not horizontally. So yes. some people either get it right away or some like, What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> so I literally have to explain it to them that the whole purpose is to look up and say that there is a superpower, whatever you want to call it, God, Allah, Buddha, Krishna, Jesus, whatever your perception about God is, is watching over you and he has your fate or your future and uh, whatever in the bigger picture is going to happen is going to be for the best of you. So sometimes because of our limited knowledge or perception, we get lost in this shallow, horizontal, worldly clutter. And we don't, we skip the bigger picture in life. And that's where we get stuck in this vicious loop and, and uh, create more problems for ourselves because we create a self-fulfilling prophecy for ourselves. But uh, do not learn to detach that if we let go of this worldly clutter, the halos of light coming from above are a lot more inspiring and rewarding. And that's, that's how people become enlightened, because they learn to let go and not try to make meaning out of every, everything that's going on in their life, but instead align it with a bigger picture saying that, this is my destiny. This is the purpose of my life. This is what I'm supposed to do right now. I'm in my journey. I'm heading that way. If I align myself with nature, maybe I'm on the right track. But if I resist or if I keep getting sucked into the worldly clutter, I'll just be caught in that loop, which is not going to take me anywhere but frustration and no meaningful life. I agree with you 100%. Now, I'm preceding that with, or actually using that as a precedence for what I'm going to follow up with. Because I do agree with you 100%, but I'm going to ask this question, not to put you on the spot, but because I know a great deal of people that are either agnostics or atheists. And I mean the atheist to be dictionary versions of atheists, the ones that I call fundamental atheists, the ones that say, there is no God, and they, you know, as soon as you get into it, they have to convince you that there is no God, where for me, the dictionary atheist is the one who's going, it, the, the, the definition of an atheist is a lack of a belief in God. So it's meaning that I don't believe in him, but if you basically is saying, 
if you can come up with a reasonable way of explaining it to me, I will at least listen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's go, to, if you don't mind, and I don't want to put you on the spot or don't want to make it sound like I'm putting you on the spot. Let's go with... Um, the uh, you you started your discussion or your um, your last presentation with uh, there is a, a being that is above and beyond us as far as understanding is concerned and in many other ways uh, and depending not, it doesn't even depend on what you you call this being God Krishna Jesus whatever um, are you talking about from knowledge? Or knowledge and experience, and I would say both. I would say both. Knowledge sometimes alone is not sufficient to get you to understanding bigger picture in life. You have to go through certain experiences, experience it personally. And I personally feel that your communication, a true communication with God, is very, very personal. You don't have to. Of course, it's good if you follow certain norms and standards that you are taught. But it's a very, very personal communication. Sometimes I say, I talk to God while I'm doing grocery. You know, it may sound funny, but yeah. I'm in the, you know what I'm saying? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, um, while I'm doing grocery shopping, suddenly I look up there. I'm like, I have a question for you. Do you know what I should do? And I've, I've had my enlightenment. I've had my visions. I've had my clarifications. And there have been times where I've got no answers that either frustrate me or tell me that, girl, you've got to be patient because this is what you may want, but somebody up there thinks that's not right for you. So, um, you know, each person deals with his own relationship with the superpower in his, in his or her own way. Whatever applies. I mean... God has given us different avenues. I call it a tree, a big tree with a solid foundation, but different branches. We all have the same root. It's just like we take different avenues to worship God. But the basic core fundamentals are the same in all religions. That's trust in the superpower, trust in the bigger picture of life, not to get lost in worldly clutter. Yes, you will have moments of overwhelm, darkness, sadness, happiness. But those are all experiences of life. And you have to go through those experiences. You cannot avoid them. You know, I look at the universe. I see God made it this way. He made tools of everything. The left hand, the right hand, the right side of the brain, the left side of the brain the light during the day and the darkness at night. You have to go through the darkness in night so that you can see light next day. You enjoy the light the next day. Lo behold, you have to face the darkness the next night. So this, this is circle of life. You keep going through these phases. And in this process, you create your own journey. You gain perspectives. You learn to handle different situations, you learn to accept that the good comes with the bad and lo behold, there'll be good around the way. Like they say, light is at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the cycle goes on. And the sooner you gain these perspectives, the less painful or the less resistant you offer to, to bigger problems in your life because you know you you may not know what the end results are, but you'll know it's not going to be the same. This too shall pass. This all will have to be behind me. It may have created some impact in my life, given a certain meaning in my life, whether a, pe meaning, uh, a painful meaning, a happy meaning, but it's created an impression in one of the chapters of my life. And then I have to be prepared for the next chapter of life, which may bring some maybe exciting news maybe happy news you know what I'm trying to say so these are all chapters of life you really go through experiencing life in different chap different phases of life and uh, um, of course you cannot I mean when, when you offer resistance that's when you bring detours in your personal life you know you're, you may be meant to do life uh, walk 
walk a path certain way, but then you are there are times where you're like, no, this is not what I want about my life. I'll take a detour. I'm going to stop it now. Uh, unfortunately, you face some consequences to it, and you're not happy with those consequences, and you create more ripple effect. And before you know, you're lost in this whirly, whirly horizontal clutter, which just makes you go round and round. So the sooner you realize that the power of detachment is the or what you call as the awareness is is in your mind, things will start falling in place. Maybe not literally, but in your mind they will start falling in place because you will there are times you will have accepted impossible things which with time will go away. And then there are times that the impossible things will turn into possible solutions and you'll start opening a channel to find what future has for you. Yes, you asked me a little while ago, do I understand? And I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I know you're busy uh, being a doctor and writing and you have children and all that. Um, so you probably don't have too much time to be listening to my shows at night or even when you have the free time, it's kind of like, ah, do I want to listen to something else? Uh, but there's a recurring theme that you'll hear. There's actually a couple of them. And when uh, the one that I'm going to talk about right now, just real brief, is you ask if I understand. And I always say that when something resonates, when there's something in me that I hear another person say rings or just makes me feel like yes I'm sitting in my chair and I am smiling ear to ear like a comic strip character and just going yeah and one of these days I want to get up and start dancing so yes I agree with all that you were saying and there's one thing that you actually said at the beginning was when you said uh, the proof of knowing God and and or anyone else well actually that's the way I'm going to actually put it in is just saying it is a personal experience and I've tried telling that to many people and uh, I know a lot of atheists, and I'm actually going to point to them on this case, or even some of the agnostics that I've known, uh, I know that uh, they got turned off, not all of them, but quite a few of them that I know, and I'm clarifying it that way because I'm not saying I know every atheist in the world or every agnostic. I just know a few. Um, some of them have mentioned that they got turned off and... They don't like religion, whether or not they became an atheist or an agnostic, because of people who go around proselytizing. You know, like the, uh, I don't want to name the group, but the ones who come knocking on your door, can I talk to you about Jesus? Can I talk to you about God? Whatever the case may be. And they're trying to convince you to become their religion. And I've oftentimes had conversations with these people and going, look, I have a relationship with God. It may not be the way that you want it to be, but I have a working relationship with God. I'm not talking about one that I just read a book and I pray and then I get up and, as I used to say even with my mother, it's just I don't get down on my knees with a laundry list of please give me, please help me, and then get up and just walk away and never listen. For me, the relationship with God is one of I speak and I listen. Or sometimes mm -hmm. I just listen. Okay. Yeah, it's basically a conversation. You're right. Yes, and that that's my relationship with God. So when you're talking about where you're in the shopping center or um, while you're maybe working with a patient or whatever the case may be, yes, I do the same thing. Walking down the street, uh, just muddling around doing nothing or uh, maybe watching a movie or something and somewhere in the middle of it it's just a thought comes to mind and the movie just blanks out of my mind and I'm having a conversation with with God okay whatever um, and the detours that we have in life that is definitely for maybe somebody who's younger than us now even you're younger than I am by several years but um, the youth of the world who are having a difficult time with understanding all this is there's far too many people trying to convince you to to become like me and you will be saved and it's like no 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 uh as i oftentimes say it no, i haven't seen any scriptures yet i haven't seen any scriptures yet that have said okay god created everything and he created this religion too he left it open to say just seek me just mm -hmm. listen 
to me. I'm the one who created you. I'm the one who can guide you through life. It is a personal experience, such as, okay, I know my mother, but you don't know my mother, so you don't know if I was born of her or somebody else. So how can you say that I didn't have a mother or I don't know my mother? You don't know my mother. It's a personal relationship. Okay? I don't know who your mother is, Shamim. Okay? But I'm sure you have one. <laughs> sure. I love her. Okay? So, um, and the one thing you said, and I don't remember how to tie this one in, but I remember I had, no, I, I had all the conversations that we've had. I never told you that I, I was a practicing holistic therapist. And I had a patient a few years ago that came in, and I'll give you the short story because I may have said this on one of my other broadcasts. Uh, the short story is I was sitting here, and this man came in, and he's in his early 30, 30, uh, 40s, I'm sorry. And he's about average height for Mex, about 5'6, give or take, 5'7. And he came in with his mother, who's in her 60s. He looked like a normal man from head to foot, slim, wiry, you know, the um, laborer type, if you will. Not fat, not muscular, not skinny, just wiry. And he looked normal, except for one thing. He looked like he swallowed a basketball that was inflated. Oops. Or he looked like he was pregnant, take your choice. And I mean pregnant <laughs> to the point like he was about to deliver. And oh. <laughs> he said he'd been to four doctors. And one was a specialist, and he couldn't figure out what the problem was, why he couldn't urinate. And I asked him several questions, but I even asked one. I said, um, "Now, okay, speaking from one healthcare provider to another, I asked him. I said, were you ever able to move your bowels?' And he says, "Yes, I do it every day, even twice a day sometimes." And my thought was. Even babies, when they move their bowels, they urinate. How do you do that? I've never heard of anybody that couldn't urinate when they moved their bowels. So I put them on the table, and I was doing auricular therapy, which is basically acupuncture or acupressure, because I don't deal with needles. Acupressure on the ear lo on the earlobes. And every point that I was hitting, well, not every, but um, about five or six points that I hit, they were all related to stress. So I started taking notes, and after I did finish the therapy, I asked him, I said, are you stressed? He says, yes, I'm very stressed. I'm always worrying about jobs, and do I have enough money to help and support my family, and so on and so forth. And he just went down this list of things. So I sat down with him and his mother, and I said, listen, this is what you need to do. Every day you go home, take off your shoes, curl your toes into a rug, a carpet, even a towel, it doesn't matter. Just curl your toes, just sigh and relax. If you're going to look at TV, look at something that's funny, look at something that's interesting, but not the news, not anything that's going to continue the stress. Look at something that makes you laugh. So listen to music that calms you down. No dance music, nothing crazy. Just relaxing music. Just sit and relax. Don't think about tomorrow. Don't think about what has happened. Today is gone. Tomorrow has yet to happen. Enjoy the moment right now. That's what it was. Detachment. Detach yourself from everything and enjoy this moment. And I said, next morning when you get up, that's when you start planning for what am I going to do today? How am I going to get it done? And you go do it. When you come home, relax. Two days later, her mo his mother called and says he is in the restroom and he is urinating and he can't stop. His bladder was that oh, full. Yeah, and it all out, huh? <laughs> yeah, he learned to detach. That was That's what right. you were talking about. Absolutely. So, like I said, in my three phases of this is how I explain life in general. Although, mind you, I'm, I'm not enlightened yet. I'm, all, I'm working on it. Like, like I told you, we, we describe life in three phases. The first phase, I call it the survival or the me, me, me phase. Mm -hmm. In that phase, usually when you're younger, you work hard for yourself. You defend yourself, praise yourself, detest yourself, prevent people from hurting you. Each person handles it his own way, some through a calm, calculated approach, some defensively, 
either way you remain in a horizontal rut even though what you think is an instant gratification and you personally feel that you may have complete control over unforeseen circumstances but truly you're in a stagnant and unproductive phase you remain in what you think is your comfort zone many of the people inhibit their growth in this phase regardless of whether they are aware of it or not but there are a lot of people who want to get out of this phase they possess the curiosity to know what is beyond this phase and in that phase it's simple you just proceed to the second phase of life which i call the phase of detachment and this is how i explain the phase of detachment i call it the second phase but it's actually a juggle between aiming horizontally and vertically you find yourself going back and forth between two separate spheres at times you'll feel claustrophobic because you can't and perhaps don't want to get out of your comfort zone which you've built around yourself and yet the door to the other side appears to be tightly shut during this phase actually is the time when we need to reinvent ourselves by changing our perception from aiming horizontally to aiming vertically this is the self introspection phase we have to look within ourselves detach ourselves from the survival phase and keep asking ourselves meaningful questions like what is the meaning of my life how am i supposed to make sense out of this phase of my life am i learning to be more tolerant am i trying to get a perspective about my life am i learning to be calmer peaceful approachable a non-judgmental individual am i learning to aim vertically every time life throws me into a horizontal phase until my mind becomes conditioned to always aspire up- upward am i learning to become a bigger person am i learning to focus on important things in life and ignore dri- trivial distractions am i learning that whatever the circumstances good or bad each experience has taught me an important lesson about my life so that my biggest fears are no longer fearful but opportunities to attain greater calmness and serenity in my life this is what i tell myself mark uh, mind me mind you i'm i i might say i'm in the later part of the detachment phase where i'm if i push a little too hard maybe i will go into the enlightenment phase but i'm still struggling there and i've i've bypassed the first part of the detachment phase where i would have more tendencies to go back into my comfort zone so i'm i'm drifting away from it so now i have no choice but to go towards the third phase which is the enlightenment phase and this is how i say it once you enter the phase of your life you'll be beyond phase 1 and you'll be closer to phase 3 your insight about life will focus on deeper more meaningful questions about your existence yeah i was just writing a note because i thought you were going to continue fact, there oh you still there yes yes can oh, you hear okay. me yes okay and in in this phase of detachment this is the i think this is the most struggling phase where you may not get answers all the time because you will keep going back and forth and uh, and this is the true test you'll face in your life and again if you exhibit persistence perseverance patience calmness dedication hopefulness and maintain vertical aim the door will allow meaningful insight into your life mm-hmm. and you will eventually go into the third phase which is the phase of enlightenment and that's where saints the prophets all the holy people are where nothing matters they are the state they have vision life that whatever comes their way they 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 roll with it because it does not bother them it's not a horizontal horizontal clutter they have already put so many halos of uh, they have thrown so many arrows up in the sky that halos of light have come and enlightenment mm-hmm. enlighten them so this is how i look at life yeah i think we're looking at it pretty much the same way i as i say in in most of my shows we can say the same thing and say it differently but we're all saying the same thing 
the way I look at it is, uh, is to use what you were saying is everything has its own time. Every plant has its own growth time. And once it reaches maturity, that's not the end of life, as you just pointed out. It's, it, it goes into a different phase, and it's a different experience altogether. That's, yes, yes. And, you know, life is a journey. The only two absolute things are the birth and death. The phases <laughs> between them, you will go through different journeys of life. Oh, and yes. You will always be, you know, this is what I say, that life is a journey. It's not a destination. There'll be good days. There'll be bad days. They'll be followed by good days again. And this will go on till eternity. Yeah, that's something that I think needs to be stressed, especially with kids, because uh, even in the news recently, I've been seeing these children, these teenagers, that have some way inadvertently had pictures taken of them, whether it's pictures or video, probably of their friends taking fit pictures or video of them in, let's say, either without clothes on or... Um, with limited amount of clothes on and it went public and in this case I only kept up with two of them but there's two girls that committed suicide because of the embarrassment of it and I like to tell people uh, but I don't do this as much as you do because I don't see people as much as you do because I pretty much quit my practice um, it's Yes, just like if it's raining today or if it's sunshine today, it's not going to last forever because it always comes rain or something else in your life. Something, as you said, it's a cycle. So it could be a long cycle, it could be a short cycle. But the point is, everything will change. True. Absolutely. Things will change and that's why I say this is, that's the insight which you have to accept that it's going with the flow, enjoying the, I call it the music of life. And you turn it down when it's too loud or you turn, tune it up when it's dull. But then you enjoy it most of the times the way it is. And okay. if you apply this strategy in your life daily, with the addition of a little bit of background dance, life suddenly feels like a song to be sung, a dance to be danced, no matter what the music is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you're talking about music and <laughs> I was trained in music but I can't remember how to describe it this way but there are uh, parts of a song especially good music where it goes faster it goes slower it goes louder it gets a little bit more quiet but that's what makes the music such it's so enjoyable it's just those changes in it I mean if it was the same beat same song repeating uh, what was the one that you probably know this one because you have younger children um, what was this one about poker face yeah. it was just the same mm -hmm. words being repeated 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 and it's like for me it was boring but I guess a lot of kids liked it but yeah it's, it's the things about life that makes it interesting the things about a movie that makes it interesting the things about good music that makes it interesting are the changes it's not just the same thing over and over and over again or as the old expression goes uh, if every day were a good day there would be no good days mm-hmm well this is you know, uh, I don't know, um, I think Einstein, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Einstein who says life is just an energy process. It's a good and a bad energy. I had recently written an article about it. If I don't bore you or overwhelm you, if I go on rambling, just stop me. Is it okay if I talk about it? I'll try to keep it as much brief as possible. As far as I'm concerned, you're not rambling. I love listening to you. You're, you're enlightening me and I'm taking notes as we go along. So, yes, by all means. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the article I wrote was that life is an energy process and this is how it goes. Growing up always was like waiting for that opportunity to be independent, liberated, have a voice of my own, have my own following, make a huge difference in the world, and just be different, not part of the monotonous crowd. Always kept telling myself, I am different because I am me. 
As much as it made me struggle between external circumstances and inner impatience, I took several detours to where I am right now. Now, looking back in retrospect, the big question that comes to my mind is that were these detours meant to be or just premature changes in my route or the best I could do under the circumstances? Let's see. Destiny? Maybe. But we humans tend to blame most of the things on destiny. Good or bad, I personally don't agree with it 100%. Although there may be some background destiny working uh, for me, but I've always had the free will to make the best or worst of the situation, which the more I think back, the more I realize were self-created. The other question is, did I take, a, did I take premature detours of wrong moves? Yes, possible again. I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't taken those routes. Call them good or bad or silly, I dared to go against odds. Take a different route. Final question was, did I do the best under the circumstances? Again, as much as I want to take a lot of credit, maybe in some occasions I did best under the circumstances, but many times I probably took easy route, path of least resistance, easy way out. Now, looking back at my life, my mind is a little overwhelmed that I probably made a hodgepodge set of decisions. But the bigger question is, if I had to do it again, would I do it differently? The answer is, okay, you got to listen to this. The answer is absolutely yes. Please don't be surprised. Sometimes, some things I would not leave to destiny. Some I would take time and think over. Some I would fight harder. Does this mean that I have regrets, if that's what you call it? I say no. I personally call it awareness. Better late than never. Awareness is knowing and acknowledging that our life is nothing but energy, which gets molded the way energetic fields are molded. You think negative, you get negative influences. You think positive, you get positive influences. Of course, any future negative events are repercussions of the negative aura in our own circle of energy, which, if we are strong enough to get out, may cease to be negative. In awareness, we learn to accept life as is, not reinforce negativity, but thrive on good energy, which some people call positivity, and thus create a ripple effect and feel more and more energetic taking us to better routes, with better moves, and more good results. Of course, some negative energy may be strong to take us back in the negative direction, overwhelm us, take us back to square one, and then sometimes we have the strength to fight it or get sucked back into it and the loop goes on and on. But just being in the awareness solves half of that negativity. When we just observe it coming and passing through our life, we learn not to react and let it pass sooner than feeding it along the way. It demands and thus creating a self-inflicted negative loop. Life is a wave of energy. Today, after so many years, I've realized that I can not change previous negative energy, but can work on being in awareness, numb the negative energy, reinforce the positive energy and see where it takes me as life is a journey not a destination. The end. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was interesting ending. The end. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically, you know, it's all about your energy. It's all about, you know, good vibes, bad vibes, what you're going to keep, what you're going to filter, what you're going to reinforce, what you're going to give emphasis on, and uh, what you're going to make out of it. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, uh, these experiences you will go through. Some you will regret. Some you will say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But then those are the mistakes you had to make to get you to where you are right now. Yeah, and I think the thing that uh, you haven't said but it's implied is that, yes, I made mistakes, but don't sit there and dwell on it. You yes. have to move forward. If you don't, you sit there and you become depressed. And that's basically what depression is. It's just sitting up here going, I can't let the past go. 
you need to move forward. Uh, Something that you said a little bit, actually, when you started, I'm different because I'm me. Mm -hmm. And there's something that, in part, this is my show and this is what I do with a lot of people in my lifetime, is to tell them that you have to love and accept yourself. If you don't love and accept yourself, you're not any good to yourself, let alone anyone else. So you can't influence anybody to be better if you don't love and respect yourself. And realize that you have a place in the world and there's something for you to do in it. Something that I learned, and I'm not sure if it was in my teens or my 20s, could probably even been a little bit later, but it was just a point of, you ever notice that if you have an interest and you think, uh... You know, I have an interest in this, but I don't know anybody else that has an interest in it, so I must be unique. Well, you actually find out that there are other people. You don't know them, maybe, but there are other people that have the same interest. This is something that even entrepreneurs tell you or tell people is if you have an interest, guaranteed you're going to find somebody once you stretch out and go... This is something I like doing. You're going to find that there's somebody else that has the same interest, whether or not it's already been started or you are the one who starts it. But somebody has that interest in it or same interest in something that you like. So now you've created your own little community or your own product, your own services that you can do on your own. This is something I used to think of as a child is... Who started this particular thought, this particular process? Who started this? Who invented this? And who started teaching classes? And in other words, give an example. Who started the computers? Okay. Mm-hmm. And who taught them how to make computer programs? <laughs> Was there a class for it when they made these computers? No. They learned it. And then another... Uh, the, the, the computers became bigger and better and then they had to start classes in it because they had to teach people how this system works so on and so forth and now it's become an industry from education to the product or the product to education whichever way you want to look at it so there was always somebody that was interested so somebody actually took the time to create this and the one thing if you don't mind me I'd just ad living on this one, but um, you said something about um, learning lessons and we're trying to deny them, and I just uh, make this akin to going to school, school, university, whatever, and if you don't learn your lessons, you will either fail it or have to keep repeating it until you learn it if you're going to go through this. So learn it, accept it, and move on. I'm a strong believer in that, that your destiny or your fate or your karma or whatever you want to call it will put you through those cycles again and again and again till you understand what you're going to get out of it and then it's time to move on. You know, I think uh, applying those in your personal lives, that's where a lot of people end up, you know, getting either sucked into a bad situation because they're not making sense out of it or, you know, they're, they're too stuck in their comfort zone and they don't want to try. They don't want to understand the meaning. So it'll keep happening to you again and again till you understand it and say, OK, this is either good for me or it's bad for me, but I need to take some action. So, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you got me smiling over here. I don't have any other questions or comments. So well, you, you know what, Kirk? Since we're both on the same page, we could talk on and on and on. So, um, I think we already have started on that when we, even on our first uh, conversation, we just went on and on and on, and we ended up both going, you know, I have th- other things to do, and you had to get to your patients. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, um, another another a great perspective about life, I, I call it the peekaboo of life. I don't know if you'd be interested in hearing that perspective about life. Do you know how sometimes we run after things, the more you run out of them, the more they run away from you, and suddenly you change your attitude and you're like okay this is not for me and you start walking away from the situation and suddenly things start pouring in your direction oh yeah the way i look at it is you know have you ever seen kids uh kids playing peekaboo yes you uh, they go hide in the room and you say okay i'm gonna call you and then 
just start, try try that strategy with the kids, you know, where you say, okay, you go. And the moment the kids say, we are ready, and you just are quiet, and they say, I'm ready, and you're still quiet, you don't respond. And then they start coming out of their shell. All that you have to do is, you know, first you can find where they are. But if you're quiet, you do nothing about it, they get perturbed. They're like, oh, she's not responding. Then they'll say, I'm here. And you're still quiet. They start coming out of the shell. They keep coming towards you. You're still quiet and numb and not reacting. Suddenly they come. They start shaking you. They're like, I'm here. Don't you see me? And that's the whole strategy. You catch them. Uh -huh. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah. So this is in a bigger picture. That's what sometimes you run after certain crazy things. And you're like, this is not working for me. I need to do this. I need to do that. But sometimes you just have to surrender to the will of God or say, Okay, this is not how it's working. And suddenly out of the blue, things start falling in place, you know. Uh, how it works, only God knows what mysterious uh, alignment of energy or whatever happens. But things start falling in place. But this is another important I've le learned in le uh, life is that when we offer too much resistance, we... Uh, we drift away from our dream or di drift away from our goal. But if we back off a little bit, keep our vision clear. Mind you, it doesn't mean that you just sit back and wait for things to happen to you. But if you keep your vision clear, but take a step back, things automatically start falling in place. They are already lined up and then you, you see them as they come along rather than trying to punch the door and say, I'm going to go across that, break that wall and go across. Uh, no, um, at, at least that's my personal experience. I'm sure a lot of people may disagree with me, but uh, I can only speak from my personal experiences that sometimes running after things is not the best way to get what you, what you want. Sometimes just sitting back and letting nature take its course, um, you know, things will, will come to you. Well, other people may disagree with you, but I'm not going to be one of them. So I'm going to ask you this. Would you liken that to saying having a goal versus being uh, greedy about it? I'll use the word greedy as saying, I have to have it, I'm going to have it, I'm going to do everything I can get to have it, and then by the time you finally just peter out, get tired of trying to get it, you sit back and you relax, and it just goes, okay, now you relaxed? Yeah, I'm tired of chasing after this. And it goes, okay, hi, I'm here. I'm just um, yeah, you know that uh, the Steve Jobs, his famous saying, if if you're working on something exciting that you really care about, you you don't have to be pushed. The vision actually pulls you towards it. Oh, yeah. That's that's one of my uh, very I love his saying. You know, so yeah. like I said, if it's meant to be, it'll come to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that I've learned in my lifetime is just you go after it, and if it deludes you, you just stop. And just go, okay, I need to relax my mind because obviously my mind is looking for something and I'm looking in the wrong place. So let's just stop thinking, let's stop pursuing, and just give it time for itself to manifest itself some way, somehow, for me, if you know what I mean. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's, you know, sometimes I think that's what some people say. Uh, what is it? What's the terminology? Go let with go the flow. And, oh yeah, go with the flow or let go and let be. Yeah, let yeah let be. You know, mm. don't try to make too much meaning out of something which you don't understand because at that point that's how it's meant to be. It'll start unwinding at its own pace, not under your terms and condition, but it has its own nature. It has its own pace. So that's why when sometimes people say get frustrated and they say. You know, why isn't God listening to me? He is listening to you. It's just like he is doing it under his terms and conditions, not yours, because he knows what is best for you. Uh, I'm sorry, you have me laughing again, which is, okay, it's not laughing at you, it's that thing of resonance again. It's just like, yes, I'm so glad to hear you say that. It's, yes, because I use this analogy a lot. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but at any rate, 
Um, when I think about American sports teams, uh, especially like football and whatnot, you see them huddle together. One team is huddling together, and they're all starting to pray and help us to beat this other team. And the mm-hmm. camera goes to the other team, and they're doing the same the thing. Same they're thing. huddling <laughs> and going, help us to beat that team. And I said, do you think God is sitting up there taking bets on who's going to win? <laughs> it must be hard on God. <laughs> It's like, hey, get out there and do your best. It's a game, okay? You're going to get paid no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, you know, we think like, uh, how does God respond to people? You know, uh, is he going to respond the same way he responds to me, him, her, people in medieval times? I think uh, that's why I say God is personal. There's no clear cut answer where I, you can say, oh, just because you did this and you didn't follow this norm, God is going to punish you this way. For all you know, you may have done something right, which made him happy, and he's put you in a in a big, big frame of uh, you know heavenly, um, heavenly. Uh, what do I call it? Uh, glitter or whatever that you know. Yeah. That was one good deed you had to do, and you are blessed. Uh, mind me, I'm not saying that you you should just count on one blessing and say you're you're all set for heaven. But again, that's it's a it's a very very personal thing. Uh, see, only he knows what is right or what is wrong and what your heart does or what your conscience says. Because, yeah. you know, all these traditions or cultural influences. It, mind you, it's good to have principles. I'm not, I'm a very religious person. So when it comes to certain things, following certain norms, the ideology behind it is good too because it disciplines you. Like in our religion, we're supposed to pray five times a day. And the whole purpose is to discipline yourself. The whole purpose is to be committed so that your mind gets conditioned and you do it repeatedly enough that, uh, you know, you do it spontaneously. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, uh, it, it's more about discipline. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think religion should not be mixed with cultures and traditions. And that's where, you know, unfortunately... There's this gray zone where people start having differences about different cult, uh, religious uh, uh, meanings. And then, you know, that's that's where radicalism comes in and uh, people tend to deviate from the main message or they tend to interpret the other religion as not being the best or, you know, um, it's 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 the traditional and the cultural or the or whatever radical influences kind of take you away from the core messages of any religion. Yeah, unfortunately, there are far too many, uh, and I'm not speaking about any one particular religion, but there are many different religions that have its, um, if you will, their cultic factions inside that they go to the extremes. And unfortunately, too many people focus on those negative cults and they tend to use just like in 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 life it's if you have one group of people doesn't matter whether it's a racial thing or a cultural thing or whatever the case may be okay it's just like in world war ii every german person was a nazi not every german person was a nazi there were many german people that literally helped those who were being persecuted. I'm not going to pick on any religious group because the Nazis picked on the the first people they picked on were the handicapped. And then they went after their own. It's like I was having this discussion with someone not too long ago. Germany started its own war with itself before it went out to other nations. Okay? So mm-hmm. it, it's a point of you have to take people on an individual basis. And the, the the ones who are the fanatics, the ones who are making the bad names that media loves to play on, you just have to take this and understand this is what sells and this is what reality is. Okay? But anyhow, I may have deviated from your thought there for a little bit, but... Um no, I think, um, Kirk, you're right. It's not the religions. It's the cults or the, the like you said, the, the people who have self-modified their own religion for their own interest. Mm-hmm. It's, it, uh, it takes them away from the core fundamental messages of any religion. And whether they do it for their personal gain, I don't want to go there because, you know, it's a whole different topic. What I say is follow 
the basic fundamentals of your religion which are pretty much same in all religion and that is take care of yourself take care of your family be a be you know a god fearing be on the righteous path don't hurt people try to be sincere try to be honest try to have a, a sincere righteous path and don't get lost in the horizontal clutter exactly i couldn't have said that any better um the one thing i was trying to bring up in this and we'll give you uh, if we have a few minutes before the show ends is uh, we're talking about the sports team and this has been something i've been seeing a lot coming up in books and in some of the movies that i like watching it's uh people that are saying uh people are going god be on our side and one person always stands there's always one person that stands up and says i don't think it's that important for god to be on our side i think it's more important that we understand god and be on his side oh well said very nice so, you know um i don't know if you heard about the boston tragedy oh yes um it's it's yeah it, it's it's a very devastating event but again right now the whole chaos of where it's coming from who could it be is it a terrorist is it a, some crazy guy for whatever reasons you know there are big big radars going out there creating fear in some people's you know knowing oh what if it's from this group what if it's from this are we going to face uh, be hurt but by my again you know while while i was seeing all these events i noticed one thing which was very inspiring for me and i learned a huge lesson out of it as painful as it is that some people suffered there what i learned in the bigger picture is that like, okay let's say two people or three people or one group was involved in creating this hatred and creating these bombs to hurt people right and they put those bombs there and they tried to destroy lives unfortunately yes a lot of people got killed a lot of people got devastated there's been a lot of trauma which has created a ripple effect but in the bigger picture if you see ir- irrespective of this chaotic event happening there hundreds of people showed up there they just ran to help these people you know it created a stronger bond they let go of their own fear they just ran to the to the site to see whatever possible way they could help them the hospitals maximized their capacity to help people the firefighters were there the regular people on the roadside ran to their rescue it felt like one community which was there helping these people who needed help and it made me wonder look at this look at this disparity there are two or three or four people who have hatred in their mind and they're trying to create destruction but they're still in a bigger picture humanity is still prevalent compassion is still prevalent and that takes precedence over this hatred this person is trying to create and it's not in this culture in this see it throughout the world in my country other countries tragedies like these there could be few people who will come and try to intentionally hurt innocent people but there'll be thousands of people who will come and run and come to the rescue of these innocent people irrespective of caste creed or color it's amazing it it was actually a very miraculous insight for me to know that the humanity and compassion still exists in this world we humans still have it it's it's beautiful yes indeed it is we run out of time here and i'm glad that you brought that up as a is a closing remark uh it is just a lesson in in understanding what you focus on is what you get so if you're looking for beauty you will get beauty if you want to help if you want to make a change in the world step forward when it's necessary and make that change dr sadiq thank you once again for being a part of our show here you have an open invitation anytime uh, i know we had this problem today so if you still want uh may 2nd the, the first thursday Absolutely. of the month you can have the I'm- show I'm all for it and I'll try to be more techno savvy next time. <laughs> yeah, well we'll talk about that before the show. So anyway, <laughs> take care, be well and we'll talk Thank you for joining us here on Your Thoughts Your Reality Radio. 
please make a note to join us again on our next broadcast. For more information, visit our website at www.ytyrradio.tk. That's www.ytyrradio.tk. Our theme music is Soul Controlled by B.O. Crew under a Creative Commons license 3.0. See our website for more information.